Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm going to go over with you how to tune up a Farmall Cub. We'll cover everything with the distributor. This one does have a distributor on it, not a magneto, uh, including putting points in it. So the very first thing that we're going to do is take the hood off so that you can easily see what's going on. I was able to remove the hood completely from my tractor. When you do that, you'll need to turn off the fuel line, and you'll need to turn off the fuel and then remove the fuel line. You can do that at either the top or the bottom of the fuel line. It doesn't matter, whatever's easiest for you. And then one of your very first steps should be to remove the ground cable from your battery just to prevent any accidental starting. Now we're ready to talk about this distributor here. So we're going to take it off of the tractor. There are two clips that hold it on here, which you can just gently remove with a screwdriver and they will snap off. And they'll do the bottom one first here. There we go. And then the top one will snap off in a similar manner. There we go. Okay, so now your, your cap here is loose from the distributor. And we want to pay attention to where the number one wire falls. So you can trace it from your spark plugs. Your number one wire is always the one that's closest to the radiator. And I traced it around and followed it and know that my number one wire is this one right here that is it's at the top when it's on there. Your number one wire may be in a different location and that's okay just as long as you know where your number one wire falls so that when you put it back it can be um, in time and then in, in the right order. Now we're going to talk about where the rotor position falls. You can see that my rotor is facing here and I'm going to make a mark with a marker at the position of the rotor, which is right here. We make that mark so that when we put it back together it can be close to being in time and it'll go a lot easier for us. If your rotor is facing maybe towards the back of the tractor and it's you know not a place where you can easily mark, you can simply move the rotor with the blade of your fan or with the front hand crank, whatever your cub is equipped with, so that it's an easier position for you to work with. But just make sure that you mark where the rotor is facing before you take that off of the tractor. Also, we'll want to make another mark down here at the base. You can see my mark here. And then I'm going to make a mark on here so that we can get that lined up as well because the gear down in the bottom. That'll just help us when we go to put the distributor back on so that it's in a close to the right position. Remove your coil wire here. There's just a bolt that screws off of that and then the wire will come right off. Then we're ready to remove the rest of the distributor body. Um, there are two bolts that hold it in here. There's one on the other side. That one's a little bit difficult but you can get it out. And then this one will come right out a little bit easier. That pulls off. And then you just use a rubber hammer to pull that out. There is a gear on the end of it that needs to come out with it. Like that. The rotor will just pull right off as well as the dust cover in the seal underneath it. And then we'll take the condenser out. So just use a screwdriver to Remove the screw and then it will come out like that. Um, also, we'll want to get the points out. So there's a bolt here that will just come right out. I'm going to work at it and pull it all the way. And then it's loose, so you can just use a pair of pliers to pull this up. Wiggle it up and the whole part will come right out. Here we go. And then that's disassembled. We also want to take this screw out. And then we're ready for the next step. I did remove both of the screws on this side of the distributor that hold these clips on there, and you'll want to do that as well. Then there's a screw on this side that we want to remove. Once we get these out, we'll be able to see the inside of the distributor to inspect that completely. There's a bolt out here with a piece of Bakelite underneath it that can come completely out. And then this portion will come out as well. And then this plate will come out. I'm going to shake it and hope it comes. There we go. That's out. So now we can see inside here. You'll notice on the bottom portion of my distributor, there's a gear here. My gear is in excellent condition, so we're not going to replace it. This does get worn often, and Steiner sells a replacement part just like this, so that might be some, a repair that you need to make. 
you can see that there's a pin here that you'll want to just use a punch and a hammer and beat that pin through then the gear will come off and then you can insert your new gear in the same manner. I'm inspecting the inside of my distributor to make sure that the springs are all connected and that these weights will um, release. You can just use a screwdriver to make sure that they're going to fly out. Also make sure that this moves freely. Uh, you don't want to have any kind of catches in there. Mine moves very freely. The weights are good and the springs are in good condition. So this is good to go. Um, if yours is extremely worn, you may want to consider just replacing your distributor altogether rather than trying to repair it. Next, you want to make sure that this plate is clean uh, so that it can make proper contact. Uh, mine isn't clean, so I'll go ahead and clean it, and then we're ready to add the rest of the parts. My plate is clean, so I'll go ahead and insert it back into the distributor. This is very directional, so make sure you get it going the right way. The largest hole on the outside of the distributor is where, there you put where there's no lip. It does need to go straight down in, so be careful when you insert it. And then you can put the screws back on the side. Inspect your clips to make sure they can hold the cap in tightly. One of mine was stretched out, so I will replace it. You can buy the replacement part right from Steiner. And then there's also a lip attachment that goes on the bottom of it and snaps in there. So replace those back in with the screws so that your clips are ready to go. Also, this insulator you can replace. My old insulator, the uh, notch or the lip, was broken off of the end so it's good to put a new insulator on and then we're ready to insert all those screws into the distributor. This is the old washer that was on there. You can replace that completely with that Bakelite washer that slides on there. Then there's another brass washer and then you can put your bolt on. This one you'll want to tighten all the way up and then we're going to make sure that it's not shorted out. That's a really uh, common mistake that a lot of people make when they are doing their distributor repair is that it gets shorted out, so you want to avoid that. So now that that's tight, we'll test that. This is my meter, so I'm going to put that end here. I'll turn this so you can see it. So I got my end here and then I ground it and it doesn't beep so we know that there's no short. You can see that my meter does work because there it's beeping. So you can do the same to make sure that there's no short and that's making contact properly. Your kit may have come with some grease or if not you can just use some anti-seize to wrap around this portion and then just put a little bit on this lobe. Use either grease or anti-seize, it doesn't matter, whatever you have. And then we'll want to drop the points down in. This is directional, so pay attention. I'm dropping it down. And then you want to make sure that the high point of your lobe lines up with that piece of bake light there. So move it down in the position there. It looks like mine needs to go down a little bit more. There we go. Okay. And then this portion will wrap around that bolt. So you can just move it until it adjusts into position. Oops, not like that. There we go. Okay, it'll go down completely and wrap around there. That's how it should be. You see that my lobe lines up and this portion of the points is uh, wrapped around that bolt. Now we're ready to put in the second part of the points. You can use a self-starting screwdriver here. You'll set this portion of the points down and put your self-starting screwdriver in there. Just get it started. You don't want to tighten it all the way because we want to make sure that we have the proper gap. So the gap on a farmall cub should be 20 thousandths. So I'm going to place this guide in here, then back up the points to where they need to be, and then I'll tighten that all the way with the screwdriver, and then it will have the proper gap. Next, we'll put the condenser in. So I already inserted my screw on there. I think it's a little bit easier if you put that in screw on first and then it will drop down into that notch. And then you can screw it down completely. Here we go. Then this uh, wire that comes out of the condenser does need to go in here. It goes in between the points and that insulator. You can see that it dropped right in there. Then we'll put a bolt on the end of, or not a bolt, a nut on the end of this, and then it will um, attach. I was able to secure the nut on this end here where the points are. 
when you do this, make sure that this uh, cable is not touching anywhere, making contact. If so, that will make it so that the points don't um, open and close properly. So I have my meter hooked up. I have it here, and then I'm going to ground it in here. You'll see, you can hear that it beeps right there. Then when I turn it to rest on the lobe there, there's no beep. So this proves that my points are opening and closing properly. You'll want to test yours and make sure that it works. Be sure to test it before you go to all the work of putting it back in the tractor and discovering that you have a problem. Just use your meter simply just to make sure that it works. Just cover on. This comes with the gasket as well as the felt gasket on the inside as a complete assembly when you purchase this part from Steiner. You would want to replace this part if either of these tabs are broken off. So that will snap down in there. And then we'll want to make sure that this felt goes all the way down. So you can just push it down with a screwdriver. And then spray some penetrating oil in there just to help it catch all of the dust. And then you can set your rotor on. This will snap down. So you put it in there, down in there, until it snaps. Right there. I did have some excess penetrating oil on the outside, so I wiped that off. And then we also put a gasket on the bottom, so you'll want to do that as well. And then we're ready to drop this distributor into the tractor. So I'm uh, following those marks that I used before, and I'm going to slide that in there. Try to line that up closely to your existing marks. Right there, you can move the rotor. Mine dropped in really easily. You might have to uh, just wiggle your rotor, go gently as you're working with that gear that's at the bottom. Also pay attention to these clips that are on the side. Don't get them stuck anywhere. Make sure that they can uh, are both accessible so that you can put your cap on. I'm tightening up this final bolt. I did put the bolt in on the other side as well to hold that distributor in there. Don't tighten it completely as we will probably need to make some adjustments when we start the track drop and we're working on the timing. But just set it in there to hold the distributor in. Then we'll want to put the coil wire back on. So this just sets onto there. There's a nut that goes over it. And then you can tighten that up. The next thing we'll want to do is replace our wires with, um, that come from our spark plugs into the distributor. So we'll start taking those off so we can put new ones on. Now that my wires are removed, I'm replacing the spark plugs so these just screw out and you can put the new spark plugs in. I did already do these three so we just have to wrap up this last one and then we'll be ready to put the wires on. You can use a deep well socket to screw these in completely. You do want to make sure that you get them all the way tightened. Like that. And then we're ready to put these wires on. So this is the uh, seal or the, the rubber that goes into the loom. And when you purchase it from Steiner, it does come as a circle all attached. And we want to be sure to get all of these wires through there. So we slit it so that it will just easily slide around. Otherwise, you can't feed these through unless you take them apart. So that seemed like the easier option for us. Then you can bolt your loom down into the head. You're going to bolt that down and then tighten it with a wrench completely. <laughs> then you can feed your, oops, I didn't get that very tight. Then you can feed yours through and then wrap this rubber into your loom all the way through. And then I'm going to tighten this up completely and then we'll be ready to attach these. I tightened my head bolt to 45 foot pounds of torque. You'll want to do the same, that's very important. Now we're ready to place these wires onto the cap. So here is my number one where I marked that. Remember at the beginning of the video we talked about that. So this is my number one spark plug wire and I snap it onto there. The firing order is one, three, four, two, so it, and it rotates clockwise. So next I'll take my number three wire and put it here. Then I'll take number four wire and put it down here. And then lastly, my number two wire goes on this side. The firing order is very important and it's a common mistake that a lot of people make when they put their distributor cap back on, but it is essential to your tractor running properly. 
the firing order of 1342 only applies to a, a farm all cob, or it might apply to other farm alls, but it is model specific. So if you're working on a different type of tractor, you definitely need to consult your manual and read for yourself what the firing order is of the tractor that you are working on. So now that all of my wires are on, it's in the correct firing order, we're ready to drop it on to the distributor. The cap is on my distributor, it's secure. I closed up the clips. Also, I did put my coil wire on. We did have to cut ours down, so you might need to do the same depending on the kit and the tractor that you are working on. You can just cut it off and adjust it accordingly. Once that's all connected, we're ready to start the tractor up and talk about the timing. So anytime that you start the tractor and you're standing right here, make sure that it's in neutral. Also, when I start it, this fan will go around, so just make sure that you don't get your hand or your hair or anything in way of the fan. So I'm going to start it up and then we'll talk about it a little bit. When we started this tractor up, it was really close on timing. It sounded really good when it started. Then you saw me move the distributor a little bit so that you could hear how it would sound if it's laboring, or it could sound too easy, depending on where the position of your distributor fell. So once you can play with it, just move it a little bit at a time. You don't need to move it a lot. You can play with it, move it back and forth until it sounds good, right where it needs to be in time. And then tighten up both of your bolts on the front and the back so that that distributor will stay into place. And then your repair of the distributor is complete.